Hey guys, uh, welcome to episode 11 and half the cabal. Uh, so when we last left, uh, Songbird and Bamin died in a horrible accident. We are now in the apocalypse episode where Ash and, oh, excuse me, Atratus and Weird are trying to save the world. No, um, they are, um, they're out. They've got some some other stuff going on. And so I realized, hey, this is Mage, not d d We can totally play with half the Cabal. So uh, we're going to play with these guys. And I think next week, so not next episode, but next week, we may have just Songbird and Mammon. And then, uh, hey, thank you guys for supporting um, Claire, Ryan, and now Samuel. Uh, thanks for uh, joining and uh, being patrons and pledging and giving us a little money so we can do stuff like upgrading mics. Yay. So I try yeah, to now has a mic. One that doesn't suck. So that's super cool. And of course, um, uh, Samuel and Claire are both sleepwalker patrons. That means that they're actually have access to Conca, which is where we put all our notes and stuff like that, including weird journals. Uh, so if you ever want an insight into weird's head, uh, those okay. are available, so you can read up on those and see what exactly is going on in that wacky, witchy head. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, when we actually pick back up, um, Atratus, Mammon, and Songbird had been researching and digging into some of the leftover detritus or stuff that the Sin Eaters had left in the basement of the Eben Dart. Had done some research, had uh, some some successes, then a failure, and then Songbird magically, literally, uh, cleared it up, and uh, Mammon was able to finish his research. Um, and then Weird was out walking in Jersey City. So uh, we're gonna pick up with 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 Weird in Jersey City. Uh, with a new set of clothes, a new phone, and a new outlook on life. Actually, I don't know about that last one. <laughs> um, yeah, not exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> throughout the night, I would kind of make my way back. The last train was like at one thirty or something. Something like that. So I make sure I catch the last train back to Manhattan. Okay, so you're back in, back in the city. Yeah. Um, and I want to find a, like a secluded, out-of-the-way place. Where I'm not going to be disturbed for a little while. Okay. And uh, I want to do a post-cognition. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, so you find some little alleyway that is not too busy and doesn't look like you're going to be, you know, uh, spotted, I guess. Uh, and unfortunately, post-cognition is not an obvious casting of magic. At least the effect isn't. Um, so that might not be problematic. Um, and I mean, you can use your reach so that you don't, like, lose your mind. Right. Stay aware yep. of what's going she on can maintain you. maintain awareness of, of her surroundings. Yep. But if yep. I don't know how far you're going, you might need it. I'm going back a couple, three years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you might need it. Yep. So let me, I got to do the math here on it. Yeah. So well, I don't oh, want to do, a, I don't want to do a ritual, I don't think. Uh, that would I? be three hours. Yeah. I don't want to be hiding out under a bush for three hours and downtown manhattan that you can find a bush in downtown manhattan well yeah <laughs> there's a whole park well, there's a whole park. Manhattan, is it? yeah is yeah that? go to central park and cast in the I've middle of the night there, but i don't know where it is <laughs> yeah it is it is it is in the island of manhattan but it's on the north end you guys are much on the south end or i guess central park literally is in the center of the island but all right so Duration, advanced duration is one reach. Mm -hmm. And I'm just doing it on myself, so that should all be fine. Mm -hmm. So I think I only need three, so I'm good for reach. Okay. Um, one reach for instant casting. One reach for uh, advanced duration. One reach for uh, possibly for, for your defense, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Let me do that again. So I need uh, one for scrub. Because mm -hmm. I might want to pause. Sure. I want to make sure I'm aware because I'm all alone. Right. I don't, I don't want to get mugged while I'm doing post cognition. I need one for advanced duration mm -hmm. and uh, one for instant cast. So I need four. Right. Uh, post cognition for me is a rote. So okay. I have six free or five free? 
Sorry again. Uh, what's post? Well, post cognition is a one dot spell. Yeah. Yeah. So five. Oh, is it not always five for each own roads? No. Uh, it it's as though you had five dots in the arcana. Correct. Okay. I don't need the extra potency. Nope. Um, I'm just but, looking back at my, like, how much temporal sympathy am I going to have to overcome? Well, you know, you're a very different person from before you awakened. You're yeah, almost a true. completely different person. And bear in mind, to go back a year, that's a minus 10. So to go farther back than that. Oh, excuse me. Like, no, that no. that part that part doesn't matter. Duration yeah, no. is how much you're watching. That's right. Yep. Yeah. There weren't that many minuses when you went. No. Or... No. Going back a distance is that's the withstand of the temporal sympathy. Yeah. Right. Right. The the issue is that I have changed significantly since okay. that time. Like when the accident happened, I wasn't awakened yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of temporal sympathy to overcome. Yeah, which is. Um, if you are vastly different, yeah, a mate, and I love it because the example is a mage before her awakening, uh, and so that's a sympathy Convenient. of three. So you that you have at least that much potency that you have to get through. But post cognition is a potency spell, is it not? It is. So you have three free potency already. All right, I'll take an extra two. Okay. Just in case. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I should be fine with that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yeah, so. you're casting this on yourself. This is something you're you're pretty confident you will need literally four potency for. All right. So I'm using shadow name and cabal. Okay. Uh, which is three and the casting tool. For four. So that's four. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that should be that. Okay. Oh, no, I did that wrong because it's a, it's a, a rote. Well, I mean, you can decide not to use the rote skill. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, right, for reach, gnosis, arcana, penalties for potency. Oh, we should have had a minus two there because you do need um, to bump it from three to four. Oh, okay. Right. Um and then you're minus two from the dice pool. Right. Um, but yeah, your Yantra bonus. So you have Shadow Name two, right? And Cabal one, like they combine. That's the three. three. Okay, right. So yeah, so um, the uh, the other option is uh, swapping out your casting tool for your rote skill, which I guarantee yeah. would be more than one. I'll do that. So My rote skill is investigation for this, so it's five. Oh, okay. So you'll basically be rolling... Um, your shadow name in Cabal is three, which handles your penalties for potency, which is minus two. So you're basically just going to roll Gnosis plus Arcana plus your plus five. Uh, plus five. Yeah. So yep. nine. Right. And then whether or not you want to add willpower. I think I'm good with nine dice. OK. Three successes. Cool. So um, and uh, yeah, well, because you haven't actually said it yet, because I know you mentioned it in in Discord, but where are you where where are we zapping your yourself back to? I'm zapping myself back to about five minutes before the crash that changed my life. Sure. So, so uh, I mean, you tell me, paint paint this picture here. So I'm just it's a normal day. I'm going to my fake job for my corporate espionage stuff. I had infiltrated a company. Uh, I've got my uh, latte sitting in the drink holder. I'm, what, are, what are you wearing even? I'm wearing like a very smart business outfit. So short, tight skirt, like a red, um, um, a red jacket, uh, white blouse. Got my hair is like as tight back as it can normally go with this massive bun because my hair is really unruly. Um, but like it, it's a makeup on and everything like I'm corporate sterile. Very not weird. Very not weird. Mm -hmm. um because i wasn't weird at this time right um and so i'm i'm sitting in the car basically as a passenger watching what's going on around us right as we come up to the crash i want to mm -hmm. activate mage site so uh with fate and time i'm looking for any kind of fate lines or temporal adjustments or anything that's happening to me while i'm coming up to this this event gotcha and yeah good okay and, and, and the reason I'm doing this is because like this was all 
the random act that happened, like the random event, completely altered the course of my life. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about a geist randomly killing somebody else to make up for the fact that they want to bring their host back. That sort of completely independent randomness just resonated with me. And I want to, this is something I've been thinking about for a while and finally urged me to do something. Sure. So I'm just riding along until the little fender bender happens. Which, um, let's see here. I'm trying to make, you don't have it in Konka. You don't have your background in Konka. No, uh, keep it secrets. Yes. It's in, it's in roll 20. Ah, that's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Let me, let me navigate over to that. Oh, I right am also, I. Yep. let's see. Ah, here it is. Okay. Yes. Keeping secrets. Though, I guess we don't really have to. Um, okay. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, the, and you're you're watching and nothing nothing out of the ordinary and you can feel like especially with fate and time like there's no connections anywhere you know you're you're not seeing anything flying off not, nothing outside the ordinary you know everybody has little connections to mm -hmm. themselves nothing is standing out and that but you can feel this kind of potential building because and you're you're not sure is this is something magical is this peripheral mage sight or is this just because you know what's about to happen, and then the car just sputters, and just and like car engine idles down and slows this up and you see yourself, you know, steering over to the the side of the road, and there's nothing, there's there's no fate connections there's no nothing influenced this and just the car has stopped okay this but okay now maybe there's a communication thing here because i remember there was a fender bender like i was oh, driving that... along and, and somebody bumped into me and we stopped and exchanged particulars Oh, whoops. I'm <laughs> okay. Okay. Just make it sure. We're, so we're that... talking. We're the two different, two different incidents. Same day. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's right. Uh, so I'm just making sure like, I'm not okay. I didn't remember that. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, no, you, you wrote it. I just read it wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. Uh, your car bumped into somebody else. That's right. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, the engine didn't stall or anything. Uh, yeah, little little bump into, you know, some guy who clearly was, you know, not watching where they were going. And you just had this little clip, you know, and it literally, like you said, it's a fender bender. There's so I'm no freeze here. Mm -hmm. And so with Mage Side Up, there's nothing strange about him. Nope. Nothing strange about me. Nope. So I'm looking around at the people on the mm -hmm. street nothing nothing you know, this is this is this is you know pure random coincidence nobody nobody is manipulating and and messing with time or or fate to align things okay i'll uh let it skip forward to where the explosion happens okay yeah which is i, I think like 15 minutes later yep so i'm yep. driving up the street i'm about to pull into the parking lot right in front of the doors and kaboom Goes. and i freeze it there sure um do i see any lines or any kind of nothing going on no the the building everything looks fine you know like you you do a little scrub you know back a little bit forward a bit yeah, yeah. you know is am I, am I missing something here and nothing and then just the building explodes uh actually if i remember correctly yeah, yeah, the whole building explodes. Um, I mean, that happened. Buildings don't just explode. Right. That's. Do you know what happens? Or yeah, was that well, a... it, it was a bomb. And somebody had a bomb in a foyer. In the foyer. Oh, okay. So if I hadn't had the accident, I'd have been right in the middle of it when the bomb went off. Right. Okay. Um, I don't want to see the rest of it from this point forward, so I okay. will end the post-cognition. Okay, go ahead and take an arcane beat. Um, okay. Notably, A, it's kind of research into your own awakening, and B, it's, I think, possibly for weird, this realization that awakenings are personal and they're from your own self 
and your own realizations. And literally, it's from your own soul. You know, one cannot trick fate into causing something to happen. Uh, now, that isn't to say that sometimes somebody does something that eventually leads to an awakening, but one cannot just prod fate and, oh, some, somebody, stump, you know, is pushed into awakening. You know, something was already there. Right. All right. So, yeah, I mean, then, you know, that takes you, what, 30 minutes, probably less of, you know, somewhere in, in a darkened alley side corner of Manhattan city city noises kind of come back to you as you kind of step out of your post cognition. It also did not help at all. So <laughs> I will uh, wait for a little while until it's a reasonable time for sane people to be calling one another. And I'm going to call Shodell. Okay. Um, and if I remember correctly, this was already kind of pushing late. Yeah, it was like... Oh, yeah. Well, it's like the whole night's passed. Like I was walking until four in the morning. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So you just into trapped the morning. in my own head kind of thing. So, yeah. So I'll wait so, a couple more hours and then give a call. Okay. Yeah. Shodell picks up. Hello, weird. Hi. Um, I'm hoping I can borrow a couple of things. Depends on the things. Um, I'm running a little low on mana and so is one of my compatriots. So access to... Um, a hollow would be great. And I've also got something of a personal project. I could really use access to a sanctum. Okay. Um, well, yeah, uh, uh, hollow and some mana, um, are any of you, um, hang on, I gotta remember the right term. Uh, are I, are either of you a, uh, a, a disciple of, uh, prime, uh, three dot prime? Um, no. Songbird is, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so you'll need an actual hallow. Um, yeah, we need him to give, like, he can take the, the stuff, the tasks, and okay, he can make move that manner around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can move manner around amongst all of you. Um, okay. Um, and uh, this, this compatriot of you, you're expecting to bring them to the hallow? Yeah, playing well with others, right? Yeah, okay. And also, we, we have a map. We can go exploring. Well, the Those were stuff given to you by the Mysterium, not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, Shodel says, yeah, um, there's a, there's a, yeah, I think there's a couple that I can, I can see if they're available and not tapped out. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call you back with the details. Um, a Sanctum, we can, we can definitely, definitely arrange. Um, and I'll uh, I'll text you the um, the address uh, to meet me, uh, and I'll let you into the sanctum. All right, thanks. Sure. As All right. As I pull up my map, and da, 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 da. so uh, while I'm killing time pulling up this map, um, did uh, Trannis get up to anything uh, last night after doing research? No, we messed around with the stuff from the um, society and then probably just went to bed. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, the um, uh, the the rest of the cabal, uh, Mammon, Songbird, Atratus, uh, Mammon heads back to his place. Uh, Songbird, you know, eventually, you know, sits, sits up a little while waiting for Weird, possibly with Atratus and like, Okay, I'm going to bed. Yeah. Uh, uh, not answering her phone. So, yeah, they all head to bed. She has a key. If... Yep, that's true. Yep. And uh, in, in the next morning, um, as you are waking up on your mirror, uh, on, on, on your mirror, literally as Atratus is waking up, the, the words kind of like in, you know, foggy letters, you know, comes up. How did it go last, uh, last night? Uh, pretty well. We met some interesting people. Um, they, they're parties for ghosts, so that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, uh, we might have an invite to their next party if they start doing this again. I don't know how much I trust them, so I might tell you to be wary and prepared to bolt. Because she said that the old ghosts 
would like to talk to you. And I don't, I don't trust that. So. Um, now, uh, I will remind you, just in case uh, you had forgotten, uh, that without Speak With the Dead, he's going to have a hard time directly talking to you. Like, signs is cost him no, a whole like, He essence. can't talk to me. I'm just talking to him. Right, yeah. Uh, I'm, my point is, there he can't do any more of a conversation. So, mm-hmm. uh, but, okay. Um, and then, um, cool. Um, so, sometime shortly after you actually get up normally, um, because... Songbird isn't here waking you up at 5 a.m. When you get up. Like a normal time. Right. Yeah. uh, Out till, you know, 11 or so. Uh, Weird. Do you go back to the apartment? Uh, Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Weird is here. I don't know if Weird went went to bed or is sitting in the couch. Yeah. No. You're sitting in the living room. Um, Yeah, I would get there like around nine o'clock or so. Okay. Yeah. So when you got there. Songbird was already gone, and there is a note on the on the fridge uh, that says, "Doing AA stuff, you know. Call you later, Songbird." All right. Um, now I don't remember, but Weird would know. Does uh, Travis drink coffee? Yes. So I'd be coming home with a couple of coffees. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been sitting there for a little bit by the time <laughs> you wake up, but no one casting weird ritual ma- magic in my living room to wake me. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the two of you there, um, so feel free to talk some amongst yourselves while I find the right stuff, if there's anything good, you guys want to talk about. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, uh, uh, completely different. Like, my hair is styled, mm-hmm. um, with a tight bun, it's big, but it's a tight bun. I've got makeup on, I'm wearing new clothes, like corporate black jacket with a, with a roughly blouse, tight skirt. Uh, leggings with the line, like a uh, tights with mm-hmm. line down the back, high heels. Oh. Did you have a nice night? Not really. It wasn't uh, very restful. But that's okay. okay. Moving on. All right. It was just sure. a rough day yesterday. All right. Sure. I had a question for you. Mm-hmm. If I'm not being too personal and feel free to tell me to bugger off if I am. What's with you and Gabe? I mean, he's my brother. Yeah, I got that. But there's some oddities about that relationship. Like what? one of you one of you is dead. Well, I mean, yeah. But I mean, that's about it. Like You understand that doesn't happen very often where, you know, dead relatives just keep hanging around. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why he stuck around but he did so oh it was his choice to do it yeah well i mean there's always something like anchoring a ghost right right not entirely sure what his is yet and honestly i haven't been super eager to like find it you guys because while, yeah twins okay. so and he was the last family i had left so I'm not like trying to get rid of him. Also, from what I've seen, the underworld sucks. So yeah, the little bit I saw it looked pretty dreary. Yeah, he can he can stay here for the time being. Okay, I won't press that any further. Um, I'm so- uh, I'm working on a hollow for us. Oh, nice! I desperately need that and have for like two days now yeah me too <laughs> so um as fate would have it um show del Tex, um and says um and uh, the 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 two texts uh first one says um hello at uh, elizabeth street garden near you um and uh mentions uh let me see here there's my I view, I need to zoom. Uh, okay, well, yeah. Um, um, and says it <laughs> It should be obvious. Um, and then the next one down is, um, the next text is uh, a you know, sanctum and gives you a, a street address as well as um, a time to, to come by 
and he will let you in and, and help set you up. Okay. Uh, cool. So there's uh, a hello in Elizabeth Street Garden. Shall we go? Yeah, let's head on out. Okay. Cool. So uh, you guys hoof it. Um, it is still uh, well. Actually, as a reminder for everybody, uh, it is still March. Um, we are we are whopping three days into our campaign. Yeah. Um, so it is it is Monday, March the seventeenth, sixteenth, something like that. I can't quite remember. Uh, it was the eighteenth this year. Eighteenth. Yep. Yep. Saint Patrick's uh, Day was a Sunday. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and um, so yeah, still chilly. Um, a uh, quick Google says that um, Elizabeth Street Garden is actually two blocks from the Puck building. Um, so it is a short walk. Um, it is, uh, let's see here. Where's that other building? Everything is so convenient in the city. <laughs> right. Uh, considerably closer than that uh, New York uh, County Supreme Court hallow. And a lot uh, easier to get into, I presume. Uh, well, for yeah, you, probably. yes. Um, and so um, you guys hoof it, you know, I, I, you know, a couple blocks, you know, why, you know, why do anything? It's afternoon. Sun is nice and shiny. Um, you guys make yourself to uh, the Elizabeth Street Garden, which is a fairly small little kind of park area. Um, and you can Google it if you guys want while, while we're playing. Um, and uh, as soon as you guys get there, um, you know, it's, you know, afternoon. There's a gallery nearby. Uh, there's some, like, a jewelry store over there. There's literally a coffee shop. Um, and uh, just kind of, uh, there, there's a public school that it backs up to. So it's just, you know, nicer kind of, uh, I don't want to say yuppie, but, uh, you know, ni nicer little area. Um, and uh, looking around, nothing really jumps out immediately um, until you guys look over towards one like corner of uh, the garden. And for whatever reason, your peripheral mage site is kind of picking up on something over there. Uh, for for uh, for weird, you're hearing or feeling, I don't know, um, you know, if I remember correctly, you know, fey laughter, if I remember yep. correctly. Yep. And you know, so that, creepy. Yeah, not a, not at all problematic. Uh, and then well, uh, yeah, it's not like yeah, it's not like Vince uh, Vincent Price laughter. It's like little little giggling children. Yeah, little giggling. <laughs> yep. For fairies uh, and pixies and stuff. Right. And I mean, um, mine's not much better. It's like uh, the hairs on the back of your neck standing up, like something brushing up against mm. you. Yep. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like hmm, something something that's mm, okay. All right, um, I'll, I'll offer uh, a trout as my arm. Mm -hmm. Let's go for a walk. Sure. Um, I told so you you're going to have coffee and a hello. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you guys make your way over to that corner. Um, and there is, at first, like, nothing seems hallow ish here. Like, uh, nothing kind of immediately picks up. But as you get closer, um, you kind of walk through a bubble. Um, and all of a sudden, the the area around just kind of whoop, just disappears. Uh, and inside, you are in um, DBZ fans. It's a hyperbolic time chamber. Um, <laughs> you have this space that looks like it was pulled out of the garden. There's like uh, a bench seat. There's uh, a fountain. But yeah, there's a fountain welling up. And there's, you know, bench uh, benches that look like they matched some of the other stuff from the uh, from the park, though, maybe a decade or two older um, and seen less use, maybe. And the nice green grass and then just sheer nothingness out beyond this very simple set of, you know, just a round line, basically. Uh, but yeah, so nice, you know, round uh, kind of shaped area, bench, fountain, and that's it. <sighs> All right. Let's uh, soak up some mana. Weird, but sure. Um, I'm presuming this was not one that was on our map. Was it? Uh, no, uh, On it is not on... Uh, the map that um, the Oceans Under Mountain gave to uh, 
Atratus, and Mammoth. Mm. So that would have been a map of the Mysterium's Hollows. The ones that the Mysterium knows, knows about, yes. Okay. So this is a Guardian um, Hollow. Mm-hmm. Um, Will they be cool with you having brought me here? Yeah. Okay. The uh, Guardians are certainly capable of playing well with others. I will leave it off the map. Thank you. But maybe note that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, you don't know exactly how much um, mana is in this hallow, because um, neither of you have that specific ability. Um, um, right, okay. Um, yeah. So uh, you do know that you have to perform an oblation, uh, just, you know, kind of a me- meditative thing in order to regain mana. Uh, it is a Gnosis plus Composure roll, um, mm-hmm. and that lets you draw mana from the Hallow, what it wells up every day. Uh, you also know that if uh, a Hallow has not been com- uh, depleted in a day, that the mana takes form of Tass, which literally is just congealed, crystallized. Um, well, actually, let me make sure I'm reading that. Yeah, it congeals and uh, crystallizes into tasks, um, which can uh, accumulate in objects or things or anything like that. Um, or water in the fountain, for example. Potentially so, yes. Yeah, I wanted to hunt around and see if we can find any of that. Okay. Tass is very, very obvious. Um, okay. Yeah. So you do not see any crystallized chunks or pieces of mana laying about. But I'm betting the water in the fountain is uh, pretty glowy. I'll go have a look. Okay. You look. Doesn't seem so. Oh, okay. Someone else has taken it. I was going to try to take it well, back the, home and let and, and this, this will be, have it. This will be more of a, like, prime is necessary to see Tass. To recognize, it, to recognize it as Tass. So it potentially could be, or it could just be water running through a fountain. Um, I mean, it's solid, right? Yeah, just well, uh, not if, necessarily. If, uh, if it were to, if it doesn't have something to congeal into, now bear in mind, this could also congeal into um, leaves. It could congeal into rocks. Uh, it can crystallize into a number of different things. Uh, and but, remember that, little prison thing there was a fridge in the bottom full of bottled water that was yeah, basically just bottles were, yeah. soaking up all the mana so uh, i'm gonna take a drink of the water okay um you you get a little sip and you're like mm, that is some many goodness uh but definitely not enough to, like you will need to fill fill a bottle or so uh to sure. actually accumulate uh enough mana do we right, still have I, our yeah. coffee cups oh yeah. yeah i'm sure yeah yeah sure i guess in the <laughs> Spike, spiked coffee with Amanda spiked coffee. I love it. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> like that is a, that is a pick me up. That would be uh, a pick me up. Okay. So you guys both fill, uh, fill up uh, your coffee cups with water. Uh, do either of you perform an oblation? Because remember the, the, any mana that's here as tasks in the fountain is we going can't to use be, it. but no, if you drink it, if you consume it, that is fine. Okay. Uh, right. It's only when it, become something that you can't put in your body safely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a rock. Can, right. Yeah. Um, okay. That is not rock candy. That is just a rock. Um, <laughs> so drinking the water, totally cool. Uh, or eating food. So a lot of, you know, if you manage to put a hallow in a bakery, magic bread. Mana buns. Uh, Mana buns. <laughs> Hi, mages. Uh, wow, mages. I mean, whatever. Thank you. Um, but, and then, yeah, the other mana that it's accumulated today that's going to be a Gnosis plus Composure roll, and any successes on that gets you uh, mana each success up to its limit, and that is a one-hour uh, process. All right, so I'm definitely yeah. going to do that. Okay, so what what does it look like when Weird kind of taps into her meditative? What what because this is this isn't necess- Well, it could be just meditation, but you know it is some process that kind of ties into her path into being an acanthus. Right. So um, she'll be sitting down on the bench and just flipping a coin takes out one of her silver coins and does that sort of meditatively cool cool oops my mouse is okay there we go 
I forgot to update aspirations, so I will. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead and do that real quick. I haven't looked at them, so I don't know Mm -hmm. that you haven't. Um, There are suggested uh, oblations, if I remember correctly. Let me see here. (gasps) No, they're not in this book. Oh, oh well. Uh, Oh, wait, maybe. Hang on. Nope, they're not. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, while you're while you're doing that, is there anything uh, specifically that uh, Atratus does to regain uh, a, a, as uh, her oblation? Um, Lying in the grass with her hands crossed across her chest or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, do you have to actually do something? I thought it was more just being here. It, it, technically, it is a being thing, but there, uh, to quote the book... You're kind of opening your pattern to receive the mana, right? Like you've got right. to do something to. Um, I just gonna be like meditating. Okay, yeah, and it's 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 always a personal thing. So yeah, go ahead and roll um, composure plus your gnosis. Okay, so um, I imagine you guys are doing this at the same time. Mm-hmm. So um, weird, you recover two mana, and Atratus recovers one mana. Cool. Uh, and that is not including what you guys stash in your coffee cups. Right. Is there a way uh, to quantify how much that was? Uh, in your coffee cups, I will tell you that is one. Okay. What did I do? Oh, I hit the sidebar. <laughs> All right. Um, so I want to fill up the coffee cup again. Okay. So <laughs> chug and go for another. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can't just do that indefinitely. No, yeah. because this is whatever whatever excess is up to five times the dot value. One second, let me find that merit. Uh, yeah, eventually there won't times, be any more matter. Three times this dot value in TAS before it stops. So, presuming this is a three dot hello, there mm-hmm. would be 15 dots worth of mana in the water. Nine. Presuming other people haven't taken some. Three times it's not ready, so nine. Oh, nine, sorry, yeah. Right. So um, another cup of water and I get another mana? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to do that too then. Okay. I guess we're just going to keep drinking this fountain until it stops giving us mana. Yep. And I mean, eventually we'll have to go pee, but... <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many... Just like how many can we get? Yeah. Um, so uh, you guys got the three from the oblation and then... Um, Yeah, and then four more between the two of you, so two each, if you want to okay. make it even split. Okay. Unless uh, Weird doesn't need more or something like that. I know no, I'm, this. even after all that, I'm still down two, but I'm way better than I was. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm still down four, but... Okay. Oh, did I heal my health when I went to sleep? Ah. Uh, I had a bashing damage. Oh, yeah, bashing damage is, is very fast. Um, okay. Yeah, it's like 10 minutes or something, yeah? Huh? Something like that. Yeah. I got that help on that willpower back then, yeah. You also got the willpower back, correct? Cool. Let me fix that. Good. Injury and healing. Healing. Bashing damage is one point per 15 minutes. Yeah. Bashing damage is no big deal. Once you get into lethal, because even one point of lethal damage takes two days to recover naturally. So that's that's pretty gnarly stuff. Uh, aggravated is one point per week, which is why even the werewolf was had his leg in a cast. Up. Yeah, he's like, no, nope, this is going to be I bit. mean, even like two days is not that long for a, an injury. Right. Yep. And this also is why you wear ballistic vest stuff, which, by the way, I don't remember if I ever brought that up. Uh, the ballistic armor, the stuff after the slash, turns lethal wounds from a bullet to bashing wounds. Mm-hmm. And then uh, whatever total damage you've taken, you reduce it by the armor. Anyways, so yes, you guys have a little chit chat and a small drinking contest. <laughs> so visiting a hollow, is that worth an arcane beat? I don't know. Is this the first time you guys have been to a hollow before? I think it's the first time and, I've been to a hollow. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Take an arcane beat. I've been doing this for like two months. Mm-hmm. I've been doing it for a while, but mostly on my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And are we like in an extra dimensional space or something? Uh, neither of you have space magic. Um, yeah, I feel like this is a. I mean, 
I don't know if it's like the spell of Pocket Dimension, but that feels like what we've stepped into. No, uh, no, Pocket Dimension would be... It's its own thing, yeah. That's right. an actual thing. Right, that creates a space. This is a portion of the world that, for whatever reason, is just not, you know, people just apparently can't see, interact with. Not quite sure. Sure. Oh, so it's not quite like we're in the middle of just empty blankness with a fountain in the middle? No, this is you have like the grass, you have a park bench that matches the other ones. You have the fountain and it's just like a little chunk of that. The little corner of the uh, the park had just been excised out. Mm -hmm. And it, and then beyond that is white space. OK, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. So after that, you guys kind of top up your mana mm -hmm. as much as we can. But right. it's better yeah. than nothing. All right. I was also making myself weak, so. I didn't. Okay. I'm only on three now. Yep. All right. Um, the second text from Shodell was going to, he was going to give me a time later or did I have a time already? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He in the, was the address and the time to meet him. Okay. And what time was that supposed to be? Whatever is dramatically appropriate. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, if you want to meet him now, sure. If you want to meet him later, sure. No, I'm just trying to, think like it's a big deal what i'm contemplating doing mm -hmm. so but i don't think atratus can help me with that i know she will be a hindrance yes well so, uh, technically she technically it would be a little bit harder but she could help in a teamwork fashion it would just require a little bit extra work it would require one extra success because she's from a different path but that's it and then yeah, I feel could, like you probably don't want something making whatever you're doing harder. But you could apply your teamwork. And so you would roll the same thing and add, potentially add bonus die to... Oh, right. Like any of my successes would give would you extra add to dice. The pool. Mm -hmm. At Atratus. Mm -hmm. There's something I need to do that's okay. potentially very dangerous. Um, it's also very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I could use some help, I think. Sure. Would you what be willing we... to? We're going to summon a Moira. OK, is that like a fair? Um, Sort of. It's a spirit from Arcadia. OK, before we do that, though, you have to understand. That words are very powerful. So uh, yeah, I'm familiar with fate okay. legends, mainly right. that he rules lawyers. So and don't say anything unless you are fully committed to the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. And no all the meanings of it. And yes. all the meanings of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go and uh, make my appointment. Okay. I have, I have wanted to meet a fae ever since I found out they were real. So, oh really? Yes. Yes. They're. Probably a little different than you're expecting. We'll see. I'm excited. Um, I have like, a journal with like things I want to do. And one of them is like, go to a fairy ring. Now that I right. know that maybe they work. So <laughs> Moira's are um, there. Uh, like you may not see something. You may not see a person. It might be a ball of light. It might be a spinning hourglass. Like you have no idea what you're going to get when you summon a Moira. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just be open and prepared. Okay. Now okay. I'm going to uh, push my my glasses up here. I think it's technically <laughs> Moire because Moire it is, is the plural. Oh, okay. Moire <laughs> is the plural. Sure. Moira is the singular. Okay. I've done some research. Yeah. Beasts. Yeah. Okay. Every, everybody else is singular. Whoa. Hang on. Out of his, oh yeah, those are all yeah. The imps plural s yes. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Moving on. <clears throat> I I retract my complaint. Um, okay. So. Um, Cool. All right. So uh, you go to meet with uh, Shodell. Um, uh, you, you definitely call an Uber now. Um, yeah. It's far away. Yes. Um, you guys actually cross out from uh, Manhattan into um, uh, basically into Brooklyn. And uh, just you end up amongst uh, like, you know, tall apartment buildings of, you know, variety of uh, various, you know, stuff very kind of classic New York is cramped kind of things and pull up to an address. And you look at this, you're like, 
This is a walk up and it says sixth floor. <laughs> and so you guys get your steps in for the day as you guys. Okay, I'll take off my high heels before I. Right. Go walking up six flights of stairs. Yep. Uh, make, make your way up and um, Shodell uh, answers the door uh, when you knock and he. Ah, weird. Good to. Uh, hello, uh, Travis. Hi. It's not exactly what we talked about, but this is fine. Um, and then, you know, kind of ushers you guys inside. The room is very, um, well, it looks like what was a, probably a two bedroom house. And basically it has been stripped down. There are no walls. Uh, the, the, well, there are walls, there are exterior walls, um, but there's no interior walls, save for like the bathroom and one bedroom. The rest of the space, kitchen, bedroom, living room has been just cleared out. It's devoid of decoration. Um, there is a large center space that has like what very, very clearly looks like numerous other circles and other magical stuff has been done and then cleaned up. And it's just got that kind of worn kind of look of heavy traffic. Um, mm -hmm. And Shodell says, um, uh, so uh, is this gonna is this gonna work? I don't know exactly what you had planned. I thought it was the thing you were doing, and now there's. You know, what, what do you? Are you? Are you I wanted good? to uh, consult with something. I'm here to help. Oh, okay, cool. Um, did you guys bring um, uh, dedication tools, decorations, to kind of consolidate what I mean, you're? Mine, but I don't think they're um, ideal for. What I have you're a doing. full set of path tools, but I thought by asking for um, um, a sanctum aligned with Arcadia, I was, I thought it would already be decorated and stuff. Oh, did you mention path. that? Yeah. I would just Earlier remember sanctum. Didn't. Okay, yeah. You said sanctum. Yeah, just sanctum was the oh. only thing you had mentioned. It's fine. Uh, okay. But that's, but, and bear in mind, uh, I mean, yeah, they, they, they like any sanctum has to be affiliated with something, doesn't it? No. Oh, OK. Not even yeah, sanctum is literally just it's the magical safe place. Now, a domain. Yeah. Um, oh. And even domains aren't necessarily decorated and set up for anything. Yeah, yeah, now, okay. that's at meta knowledge. The one thing I will mention, and it might actually help weird out in this case, is because you are going to pick one arcana to call on. So you want a moray. So that is yeah. fate. The Wait. other other stuff that is related to it is going to be give you an idea of what the second arcana might be, mm -hmm. uh, as well as just things to help make the passage easier for the fate thing. So you could if you wanted somebody to talk about fate and entwined with death. That's kind of why I asked the Tratus to come, actually. You, you, you got okay. the stuff for it, you know, so. But that that is that is your call. That is how you wish to proceed is is up to you. OK. Um, yeah, let's uh, get our casting tools out. I'm trying to summon the people who cut the ribbons. <laughs> yes, that's a very good analogy. <laughs> so Shodel okay. Shodel goes. This isn't my thing. Out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I can't help this. And uh, you watch as he um, basically just, again, just vanishes. Uh, leaving from here to That's somewhere. weird. Yep. There's Space. a door right there, but sure, dude. Well, why bother? Why take the two steps to go there when you can go right back home? Because it's an act of hubris. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he, he is not that wise. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> um, so, and bear in mind, if you're saying, hey, I need to get from here to here in a minute, it's not an act of hubris because you couldn't do that without. You can't do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that said, yeah, I, I need to walk downstairs to pick up my paper. Definitely act of hubris. Can Mammon do that? Um, or is that like a later he, on thing? Um, he can do something very, very similar. It's actually a, what he can do now is make two locations the same. Um, and then pass through them uh, and actually allow other people to pass through them. What Shodell does is goes from point A to point B. He just is there. Just teleports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, OK, cool. So you guys go ahead and um, set yourselves up and I will I will make this offer for you because it's in the book and I really like mm -hmm. it. Um, so <clears throat> um, 
there there is a base number of successes that you need to get to summon a supernal entity. We'll adjust that base 10 uh, based on some some options. But notably, you can subtract successes needed when you incorporate items and conditions into the summoning that corresponds to the realm in question. Um, so use the description, blah, 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 blah. But the character must weave these correspondences into the ritual gracefully enough to ease the summoning. Storyteller, that's me, can either adjudicate the number of successes shaved off based on the role, uh, of the player's descriptions of the character's actions, or the player can roll intelligence plus a cult. Every two successes on that roll removes one success from the target number of the summoning spell. Which would you prefer? Um, I think I'm going to try the other one, the narrative one, because my intelligence <laughs> and occult is pretty low. Sure. And knowing Craig, that's, that seemed much more of a Craig thing anyways. Okay. Can cool. I roll? Because I have pretty good intelligence and occult. Uh, this, this is, this is, this just is him? weird. Because he's the one yeah. doing the... Right. Or, She's the one doing the summoning. Yep. yep. We, this is all on weird. OK, so uh, by default, uh, I already know that you're picking your fate as your uh, targeted Arcana. So you're summoning a more ray. Uh, and you I'm will... hoping for a fate death combination. Right. Uh, yep. You don't have three uh, dots in death, so you can't make that call. You're just hoping and you're kind of trying to adjust. Yep. Um, right. uh, go ahead and subtract one mana because that's required for the summoning. Uh, right. That only comes from weird, not from Atratus. Atratus is just helping. Um, and then let us calculate successes. Um, whoops. Can you okay. use my tools? As, yeah. as part of the instrumentation. Okay, yeah. My, yeah, my and things are death aligned. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and that's that's why I'm hoping your tools yeah. will encourage a fate death. Yep. Right They're all made out of carved bones. Yep. Okay, so we have a base of 10. Uh, are what kind of what rank entity are we aiming to summon? Just one is plenty. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, should definitely be only. Uh, okay, how many? How long do you want them to be in the realm before they start taking damage? Bear in mind they can be in the realm taking damage and still converse um, because they take damage um, immediately. Right, um, and they unless take I one point of damage every hour, they say in the circle. So they can be right. here for hours before, unless you're asking them to leave the circle to do something. So they can be in the circle safely indefinitely? No, not indefinitely. They'll take one point of damage every hour while they're in the circle. At the end of an hour or at the beginning of an hour? Well, because they take damage immediately. So it'll okay, be hour so and then hour and then... Yep. Okay, so I want 30 minutes. Okay, now... I figured my, it's just polite to not be injuring a spirit I'm summoning. Okay. Yeah, can they choose to leave when they start getting hurt? Or are they uh, still stuck to what Actually, the, uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. Once the being runs out of corpus, it vanishes. The denizens can sense when their time is running out and usually attempt to get back into the summoning circle so they can go directly home. If, however, and I'm reading this mostly for the folks at home so you know what could go wrong, but that way these guys don't too. If, however, the creature dies outside of the summoning circle it, or is killed by a deliberate magical attack, it cannot use the path laid down by the mage to reach its home again. Instead, it vanishes into the abyss. This is oh. obvious to anyone watching. Black tendrils may extend from the walls and rip it to shreds, or an abyssal being may manifest to collect it. That's so sad. No. Don't let this happen. Don't before kill it, we, yeah. Yeah, before we get started, you know, like, Anytime you're summoning it, you might open up a rift to the abyss, right? You, I mean, you're aware? We're going to try and avoid that for sure. But there's always a risk, right? I mean, what happens if that happens? Are we just going to get eaten by void monsters? Well, we're going to be in a tough fight. Depends on what shows up. Depends on what Depends happens. Depends on what shows up. Uh, because the abyss could, uh, the, the it could summon an actual abyssal entity. It could actually, well, actually, no, it will summon an abyssal entity. What entity that happens to be, you don't quite know. Well, let's hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have base 10. Uh, all right, and then you're adding one success to give them 30 minutes before they start taking damage. Yep. Um... We're going to come back to that one. We need uh, successes for sleepers. Uh -uh. Uh, one success per mage of a different path. That's one. Uh, add a success if it's taking place in a domain oriented to a sanctum uh, to realm other than one in question. Nope, not in domain at all. 
Uh, add one success if the mage has caused a paradox, even if he contained it within the last week. We've had no actual paradoxes happen. No actual just, paradoxes. We just rolled chance die. Subtract three sec successes if the summoning is taking place in a domain oriented to the realm. Not taking place in a domain, just a realm. Or just a sanctum. So we still have three. And then um, we need to protect the area from abyssal intrusion. So wait, hang on. How did I get to three? Yeah, you're good. Okay. One because uh, of me, one because... Time. Yeah, or, one 30 minutes. What was the third one? No, the yeah. presence of... No, oh, hang on. You, no, we're good. I, I don't it's remember just, how just, you, you... But you're right with three. Yeah, three was right. I just don't remember what the third one was for. Yeah. Was it you? Oh, well, we will start talking about the third one is what it is, because uh, protecting the area from abyssal intrusion. So by default, you can roll resolve plus your composure many times to get the required successes, plus any additional successes that you set aside to protect the area. So if you need three more rolls, you can add three more successes. If you want five more rolls, you can add five more successes. Right. Um, but and the more rolls that gives me more rolls that are safe before that are safe. I start rolling. Yeah. Um, I'm already at 12 roll, uh, 12, 12 successes, 12, not including what stuff you may reduce from your incorporation. Right. And I'm rolling to do what's the role I'm making for this? It's Gnosis or something. And uh, oh, your Gnosis plus your Arcanum. No, so it's plus Arcana. Okay. So you've got five plus whatever so Atreus five. might be able to help. Right. Okay. I think I'm good with that. Okay. Because we uh, can always stop the summoning if we're getting into danger. And just, and just to say you that, never mind. We're going to be yeah. out. But you won't know. So you, you'll know how many you can make safely because you, you know what your resolve and composure is. But after that, if you ch start chancing and stuff like that. So, okay, cool. So we are we are aiming at 12. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell me how you were kind of uh, incorporating these things into uh, into the ritual. So I've got the circle mm -hmm. and we've got the tools laid out um, and I'm going to use uh, my tarot deck. OK. Um, and as I'm doing the ritual, I'm pulling out tarot cards and setting them down to fill in the holes in the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hopefully they all come up good. <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, and that's my plan. Okay, but what about the the death objects? You just, um, just they're just being set up around, or yeah, I don't. I I mean, I have a death um, arcana, but I'm only one, so I don't feel very confident in coaxing that side out. I don't unless there's something a traders can do to help. I mean, I was gonna say put the mirror in the middle is like a um focusing point for it to come through okay that's a good idea and arrange everything else around it right okay so uh, i've got my 30 silver coins and my other casting tools laid out around the circle to try and focus that magical energy and then the mirror would be in the center mm -hmm. as sort of a, a, an ease in opening a portal sure it's like a it. bone handled hand mirror mm -hmm. nice okay yeah um and then uh cool all right, so we'll subtract two off of that. So I think we'll just aim at a flat 10. Okay. So, uh, and let's do this properly. So we'll have uh, a Tranus roll, her Gnosis plus Arcanum. Now, in this case, you don't have the um, Fate Arcanum because technically that is the roll, is Gnosis plus Fate. So you're just yeah, rolling so your Gnosis. Just just one? Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only thing I have selected. Okay. okay, no no bonuses on the first roll. So weird, go ahead and roll. Oh, what is your resolve plus composure? So everybody at home uh, knows how many. No, no, not yours. Oh, uh, okay. Five. Yeah, five, okay. All right, so I'm doing a sheet roll, gnosis, and fate. Okay. One success. Okay, not to a great start. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, or try to just go ahead and roll. Uh, I roll again mm -hmm, because yep. you're you're continuing to help. And this is, uh, by the way, each roll here is one hour. 
So we're we're set up for a while. Yep. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. Better roll a zero. Uh, oh, I hope. No, oh, no, no. This isn't a chance roll, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So roll two, three. Okay. Go ahead and roll again to try this. Okay. Oh, one. So, uh, so weird. You can roll plus one. Okay. So we're at what now? Seven. Four, six, seven. Seven. Okay. Two more rolls. You got two more shots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. One more for me. Nope. That's nine. nine. We only need one more. Only one more. Mm-hmm. Nope. Ah. <laughs> we did it. <sighs> okay. So five but now comes a dangerous hours part. Later. Five hours later. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, you know, you and the. There, there is, you know, the, there's a ritual and basically uh, and, and weird is going through and, and calling up and uh, because you're calling up and what what are you asking for? Is it what is, what is the uh, the question or the, the the action requested? I'm what I'm going to want to do is to I want to learn about. Just to cut right to the chase, I want to know if sin eaters are agents of fate or if their actions of stealing lives from other people are outside of that. Okay. And so, yeah. And so Weird is making this request and, you know, going through these motions, calling, you know, using very witchy acanthus stuff. And poor Tratus is like, I'm following along, (laughs) sort of. I'm helping. Right. This may be a bad time to tell you that I'm not really sure how to coerce, like how to coax them into helping. I've got some ideas, but we'll see. They may not like it. Yeah, we did not okay. do ritual. We did not research these things. Okay. I'm um, sure. Yeah. Uh, so the, there, there's a buildup of arcane energy. Mana is being, you know, kind of washed around. You've got like the one mana that you've kind of put into this and it's, you know, swirling about. Um, and then, uh, oh, what time is it? <laughs> almost <Right down. laughs> oh not quite yeah. um but um and the the there, there's kind of a hum there's a feel to the the room the peripheral mage site is going absolutely bonkers um and then there's almost like a, a snap haha avengers endgame no um <laughs> and and suddenly that buildup is just suddenly gone and there is just a whisper kind of sound uh, behind Weird's head, you know, f- long fingernails kind of, you know, sliding across shoulders and stuff like that. And it's just one little question. Why do you deserve this knowledge? <laughs> Time out. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, guys, we'll be back next week. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh yeah uh we try not to get eaten by a fae yeah who who knows what fae's do when uh when they are not appeased oh uh, yeah amara wouldn't eat me it would just make life really miserable <laughs> miserable so for you yes <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> probably for me for prob- probably here. just you uh mm-hmm. you are the one daring to ask so um thanks guys for hanging out with our little uh duo session uh it will continue next episode um and uh we will we will catch you guys then and we will figure out why weird thinks she's worthy of this knowledge uh so we will catch you guys next time bye hey guys thanks for watching episode 11 um Thanks for sticking all the way through and all that. Um, so Weird just summoned a thing, and it wants to know why she's worthy of knowledge. Do you think she's worthy? You know, let's know down in the comments, that whole thing. Uh, and of course, if you are enjoying the show, please like, subscribe, add some more comments, hit the bell, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you get notified and, you know, helps us with the YouTube algorithm stuff, right? Uh, and then, of course, if you want to uh, support us monetarily, which we greatly appreciate, uh, you can join us at patreon.com slash Occultist Anonymous. We're on Twitter as Occultist A. We're on Discord. That's also down below. Um, come hang out. Uh, we've had some pretty interesting discussion. Literally right now, people are discussing, hey, what should the Cabal name themselves? Because the puck building Cabal kind of sounds dumb. So, you know, come around. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.